Hello everybody, it's Marion Stewart and welcome to our session today and I'm just going to give you a minute to settle in. I want to tell you that there's a Q&A session at the end and there's a Q&A box which you'll find at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop and I'm not quite sure where it is if you're on the phone but please put your questions in and I'm very happy to stay and answer as many of them as I possibly can. So hopefully everybody can see the screen. If you can't, if you can just put some comments in and um, our moderator today, Ellie, will jump on that and help you. So let's get going and focus on the subject. We are today focusing on new normal and we're doing that because there's been obviously a lot of fallout after COVID and so many women who are already feeling stressed and anxious are feeling even worse and men aren't feeling much better because of uncertainty and all sorts of things. So just if I introduce myself first of all and um, tell you a little bit about me and then I'll tell you why I feel particularly qualified to be running this session. So I've been around a long time. I've written, just finished my 28th book, which is my first American book on self-help and I've written a lot on hormone health, on PMS, and menopause, irritable bowel syndrome and lots of other things. And I've had my own TV show, radio show, and I've done all sorts of other education films and uh, initiatives in the meantime. And now I'm focusing on natural menopause and helping women in and out of the workplace. But I have had a lot of life issues in my own life and it occurred to me that because of that, I felt really qualified to help women going through a new normal. So 11 years ago, I, I had four children and I was at the top of my career thinking on one Sunday morning that everything was amazing in my life. And two police women knocked on my doorstep to tell me that my youngest daughter had passed away and she was a medical student. She was given a legal high and I was obviously in deep shock and eventually after, well, we've got hidden in a hotel for four days and four nights by the Telegraph because the press camped on our doorstep. But I obviously at that point wanted to change places with her and couldn't. So I ended up running a campaign in her memory. And it was a very successful campaign called the Campaign of the Decade by one of David Cameron's cabinet members. And we did achieve a lot. We, had, we achieved a new bill, new psychoactive substance bill, banning all the legal highs. And, but it did take its toll on me. And I got very stressed because some days I had to do seven or eight TV interviews and everyone wanted to know what it feels like to talk about the death of your daughter. So it made my cortisol, my stress hormone go up. So that was one of the things that I had to deal with. And then a few years later, I got remarried. And 15 months after we were married, which is only about two and a half years ago, my new husband was diagnosed with stage four leukemia. And I was in America at the time, we had to go to New York to get him some life-saving treatment. And during that time, I literally didn't have a teaspoon, I didn't have a roof over my head or anything. And I was just thrown into this complete chaos and had to work out how to live a new normal. So when COVID hit and I was swimming along one morning, I suddenly got up and Paul and I realized, I know how to do this and I can help other people deal with it and deal with it to the point where they can thrive in new normal and not just do okay or deal with it. So I wanted to share some of the wisdom to you today because I have actually put something together which is called seven ways to thrive in new normal, which is, includes dealing with stress and anxiety and all the other things. So shock is something very major and when it happens to us, no matter whether it's the ones I experienced or whatever you've been experiencing with COVID-19, when your world changes and you can't really control what's going on in your life, it does affect you in lots of different ways and affects you, lots of women and men too, probably, but I, I deal mainly with women, felt very scared, isolated, worried about the future and just when you think you're in control, you find that you, there are certain things that you can't control and it's also unknown and so frightening. And obviously for people who can't see their family, can't be in touch with other people, some people are isolated alone, 
some people lost their jobs. It, it, it's just a, an awful situation. You can't even, and, and obviously not to mention the people that lost people who were close to them or even had people very ill in their lives. So there were just so many different things going on. And I wanted to reach out and help people. So we did that by creating a series of tea times for my community. And I wanted to help them to know that although it seems very challenging to begin with, we have got lots of blessings in amongst all the chaos. And it's important to identify them and work out how to nurture ourselves and be strong so that we can go on and be there to help other people, but also we can face getting up every day and enjoy what we have rather than thinking about what we haven't got. And that's one of the key things. So if you've been really worried and feeling anxious, some people even have panic attacks and palpitations, you can't concentrate, you've got brain fog, you're feeling overly stressed and it's stopping you in your tracks, then I've got lots of self-help information for you. So my seven ways to thrive in new normal include breathing mindfully. So we'll talk a bit more about all of these individually, but breathing is just so important. Reframing your attitude because your mindset means a great deal and the outcome that you achieve in any aspect of your life will rely on your mindset, whether it's positive or negative. Stilling the anxiety and stress so that you're in control rather than it being in control of you. And then connection with others and having a routine. Boosting your immunity because we're not done yet, yet with this virus and there may be other viruses to follow. So we need to be in a really good strong immune place. Nurturing and nourishing yourself, that's important too, because if you don't do that, then you're not going to be well and you won't be boosting your immunity. And then also finding your new normal. In some cases, people may, this may be an opportunity to change what they've been doing in their lives. And in other cases, they'll be doing more of what they've been doing, but maybe in a slightly different way. So working out what that is for you. So breathing, first of all, and being mindful. There are lots of videos, uh, particularly on YouTube, TED Talks about breathing. And I would, if you're not really familiar with breathing techniques, I would urge you to go and watch some of them because being still and in the moment and refusing to listen to negative voices is really key to staying well and happy. And so when you do hear those negative voices in your head and they're making you feel really bad, you need to have a system where you stop in the moment, you do some mindful breathing, and you focus either on an affirmation that makes you feel good, or you maybe focus on a photo, or you're looking at a beautiful flower, or a scene, or whatever it is, or thinking about someone you love, to actually get through that period of feeling bad, and come through it so that you can move on and get on with the next thing in your life. And taking time to relax is really important as well. Some people are good at relaxing, and I mean proper formal relaxation, not just sitting watching TV. So to do a session of relaxation every single day for at least 20 minutes to half an hour is important because it helps to rewire your brain. And I'll explain a bit more about why that's important when we get to talking about cortisol, the stress hormone. But it is important. It helps to rest you as well. It helps to calm you down so you don't feel so anxious. And there are lots of different apps you can use. I love the Paziz app because it has been created by neuroscientists and it takes you into a really deep relaxed state and brings you out again. And it also helps you. So there's a sleep app in there as well as a nap app that helps you to get back to sleep if you can't sleep at night. But any kind of meditation or yoga, breathing or headspace or clarity or any of those apps will be good for you. But you just need to get into a routine where you're doing at least half an hour. And if you are going through perimenopause or menopause, Doing that will also reduce your flushes by 50 or 60%. So that's important as well, and night sweats. Looking at your attitude is important. And when you're feeling that you are anxious and focusing on the things you haven't got, shift your mind to back to the things you really have got. If you haven't already got one, create a gratitude list. I get my patients to do that, and I've done it myself. It's just every single thing you can think of to be grateful for. And that could be the fact that you can see, you can hear, you can taste lovely food, you can smell, you can walk and be active if you're physically fit. 
you've got people around you, your friends, your family, your environment, your home, anything you can think of and just keep adding to that list. And anytime you feel anxious or down, you can refer to that list. It can be in a, a nice notepad or it can be on your phone, whatever or both so that you can constantly remind yourself of all the things you have to be grateful for. When you hear what's going on around the world and you see some of the world disasters, you know in your heart that you have got a lot to be grateful for and you just need to focus on that. It's really important. Being grateful also helps to release the feel-good hormones. Next is stilling anxiety and stress. Now we all get anxious and we all get stressed, but there are times in our lives when it becomes overwhelming and we need to deal with that. And it's a question of understanding what's going on in your body and how you can deal with it. So when you're feeling anxious, it's a natural response to stress in your body. It's a feeling of fear of what's to come, apprehension, and it can make you feel really uneasy uneasy to the point of sometimes having panic attacks and palpitations and not knowing how to get your act together as it were. So when our hormone levels fluctuate, our anxiety is likely to be worse because the brain sends out messages to the hormone producing adrenal glands and you get a surge of adrenaline. So you get the flight and fight mechanism. That's all very well if you've got a brown bear standing in front of you, but when the brown bear's gone and you're still feeling like that, you need to be able to do something about it. And for many people, that happens, and you end up getting high levels of the stress hormone cortisol. So a few things that you can do to deal with the anxiety, which I've alluded to, is to really stop in the moment and do some mindful breathing. Maybe take yourself off. If you wake up feeling anxious in the morning, you can plug into something like the Paziz app and you can take some adaptogenic herbs or some valerian. There's a book by Louise Hay and a doctor called Mona Lisa Schultz called All Is Well. And at the back of that book, there's a whole big chart of affirmations that you can choose according to your symptoms and how you're feeling. And if you write down some of those affirmations and practice them, when you get this wave of anxiety, you can go straight in, do your breathing, say the affirmation, and then focus on something positive and then move on. That's important. Also avoid caffeine because caffeine can make you anxious and that's even caffeine in decaffeinated drinks. So find alternatives. There's dandelion coffee. You can get ground dandelion root. You can put through a cafeteria or filter. You've got lots of herbal teas, lemon and ginger, berry teas, red bush tea, lots of different things that don't contain caffeine. And that includes chocolate as well. So if you're feeling anxious and cola, just keep those caffeinated drinks and foods out of your diet. It's really important. And then going on to stress. So in your body, stress is probably in some cases desirable at some level because it helps us step up. It helps us be our best. But when stress gets out of all proportion, it becomes distress. And at that point, it changes everything for us physically, mentally, and emotionally. So many things go on in our body when we're feeling stressed. And it stops us from being able to function in the way that we need to. So it's a, a reaction that we get that needs to be addressed because when you are constantly stressed, your hormone, your cortisol hormone rises and you cannot control it and then it becomes a problem. So it goes from being part of normal life to stopping your normal life and that's not what you need. So just to give you a bit of an idea what happens when the brown bear is there or you perceive that there's something that you need to be anxious about and obviously COVID is a big example and all the things that have happened in our lives as a result of that. So you get actual hormone changes happening in your body. You get elevated levels of serum cortisol which is the stress hormone and the steroid hormones that uh, are produced by the adrenal glands are flooded into your system so that you are meant to be able to deal with this emotional crisis. But in fact, if it goes on and it becomes chronic, then you can't do that. And not only that, it doesn't just make you feel bad in the moment, it can do so many other things. So when I was running the Angelus Foundation and I was doing all these TV interviews and at the peak of the campaign when we were on the way to getting the bill implemented, I suddenly woke up one day 
and I've never experienced this in my life before, but I felt like someone had rubbed my brain out. I had such severe brain fog, I could hardly move. I could hardly get out of bed. I just felt so anxious. And I had all sorts of other things happened in my body. So I got inflammation in my chest, inflammation in my bladder. I had even inflammation in my brain and it wasn't a good feeling. So it can make you, it can definitely impair your immune system. It makes you flatline so that instead of when you're in a situation with someone you love and you know you should be feeling in a certain way, you are in a place where you just can't experience joy. You just feel like you're flatlined. And that affects your mood, it affects everything. So it's so important. And having high levels of cortisol can be lethal. So you do need to work out how to get your cortisol levels down. In my case, I was really lucky. I, my GP just happened to be so clued up. He knew a lot about nutrition and together we did world literature search and we found all the things that lower cortisol, all the natural things. And so I set about, I took some time off for the first time in forever and I set about doing all the things that lower your, your serum um, cortisol and it involved all the things that make your heart sing as opposed to make your heart sink. So whereas I'd been doing all these things that made me feel bad, suddenly I was doing amazing things like having a massage or going for a walk on the beach, doing some yoga outside in the morning in the sunshine, mindfulness, mindful breathing, all sorts of relaxation, watching funny movies, laughing with my friends, and anything that made me feel really good. And that, over a period of four months, brought my serum cortisol for a, from a massively high level down to a normal range. So you need to look after yourself. And I think as women, and I imagine that most of this audience are women, we tend to do things for everybody else first. We're busy at home, we're busy at work. If you've got kids, if you've got a partner, whatever you're doing, you're doing for other people, for your extended family, and then you come last. So this is a time in your life when you're feeling stressed and anxious, you have to stop. I didn't have any choice. I had to stop for my own well-being and reboot and recharge and learn to refuel. And that's what I did to get my cortisol back into nocturne range. And you can do that too. You're probably not suffering anywhere nearly as bad as I was, but you can come back from how you are feeling. And I found that there were adaptogenic herbs. These are some of them that you can use, which help. You can use them at day, in the day or the night. So things like ashwagandha, rhodiola, there's another one called holy basil. They're all herbs that help your body to cope with stress. So you'll find a way of incorporating those. And if you need some help, we can give you some help as well. So number four is routine and connection. So a lot of you by now will have found the way because this hasn't just happened and you've got into a routine of working at home and still being there with your team if you're still working. And if you're not still working, you've probably found some kind of routine for yourself, hopefully. But it is important because I found when I was running my tea times that the women were coming and they were actually in their pajamas. They hadn't got dressed. They were just not putting on makeup, not, not washing their hair. And it is important to get up in the morning and have a timetable. If you're working, you know what your timetable is. If you're not, you need to make one. So making sure you've got time in there to exercise, making sure you've got time for your relaxation. If you're working, then obviously you fill that with your meetings and whatever else you're doing. If you're not working, you need to fill it with things that are going to be helpful for your career and things that are going to make you feel good. But it is important to keep it diarized so that you're not just wandering through the day, sitting on the sofa, eating popcorn and watching Netflix. Staying connected has been shown to help us immensely to feel good. There's been research published in The Lancet, which is a very prestigious medical journal, showing that even if we connect virtually, it's going to help us feel good. And that includes with our family as well as our colleagues. So I urge you to keep on doing that and feel grateful that we can do it because a few years ago, we didn't have things like Zoom. And so we wouldn't have been able to connect in the way that we can now with WhatsApp and Facebook and FaceTime and all of those things. Next, number five is boosting immunity. So boosting immunity is really a key thing to do. You need to be able to ensure you're at your strongest because if you're not, then you're much more likely to get sick and you want to be really resilient at this point. As we get older, 
we often become nutritionally deficient. Now, in the early days, when I started the advisory service that was helping women with PMS, we couldn't work out why the women were suddenly getting better without taking any drugs or hormones. And we tracked it back eventually. We did five separate studies, and we found between 50 to 80% of the women had low levels of nutrients, things like magnesium, calcium, iron, zinc, essential fatty acids, vitamin D, and so on were in short supply. And as you get older, your nutrients become even further in short supply. So you get to a point where you're like a bucket with a hole in it. You don't have the wherewithal to function well. So you feel tired, you feel achy, you can't sleep very well, your mood is low, and it's hard for you to be enthusiastic about anything because you've got low levels of nutrients. You're in what I call economy mode. And you need to learn how to get yourself back into really good shape. So this little graphic shows you what Mother Nature offers us in the way of signs. But unfortunately, most of us are not tuned into what I call body speak. So for example, if you've ever had cracking at the side of your lips, if you've had red patches at the side of your nose, dry skin, spotty skin, flaky, greasy, uh, pimples on your upper arms and thighs, your hair doesn't grow well or it's falling out or it's not shiny anymore, your nails are split and brittle or ridgy, all of those things mean something in terms of nutritional deficiencies and also your tongue. If your tongue is sore, if you've got mouth ulcers, all of those things mean something. So after this session, you will be able to download a nutritional deficiency assessment tool. So make sure that we of the city have got the link and you can use that to detect nutritional deficiencies because it may be the first time you've ever really looked in the mirror and looked for these signs. And then you can look at the things you may be deficient in and find the foods that are rich in those important nutrients so you can make your diet really nutrient dense. So boosting your immunity means that you need to make sure you've got plenty of all the healthy, colorful food groups, that you don't skip meals, and that you get plenty of vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc in particular, because they're the nutrients that have been shown to help us boost our immunity. And sometimes people are anxious about whether they're going to get sick. So just boosting your immunity and knowing that you've ticked that box will be one less thing to be anxious about. So that's important too. And you can also maybe take a probiotic because boosting immunity has been shown to be related to the good bacteria in your gut. And very often those are out of kilter. So taking a good, strong probiotic is important as well. There are other helpers that nature sends us. So things like herbs like oregano, garlic, ginger, basil, peppermint tea, peppermint leaves, all those kind of things. I tend to make a glass of lemon and ginger tea in the morning, chop in some fresh ginger and a slice of lemon, and I use herbs in cooking and fresh mint this time of year. You can pick fresh mint. All of that helps you to stay more resilient. And also taking plenty of exercise. Exercise releases endorphins. It oxygenates your brain. And it helps you to stay in the driving seat. It helps you to be resilient. Next up, number six, is nourishing yourself. So going on from what I was talking about, boosting your immunity, you need to make sure that your diet is as nutrient dense as possible. So that means eating wholesome food every meal, never skipping a meal, and having as much home cooked food as you possibly can. If you're still having periods, you're a woman and you're having periods, then your calorie requirements go up by about 500 calories a day in your premenstrual phase. So you need to have more good nutrients. You have a physiological need for them. If you don't reach for the good nutrients, you will be driven to reach for the bad ones, the chocolate, the cakes, the biscuits, and the junky foods. And you don't want to do that because that will take the place of the wholesome foods and it will lower your nutrient levels even further. So you don't want to be doing that. You want to make sure that your diet is really dense in all these key nutrients, especially if you've still got a period, you want to focus on iron, B vitamins if you're feeling stressed, vitamin D, most of us are deficient in vitamin D, it can cause aches and pains, it can cause bladder problems, depression, all sorts of things. So you need to make sure you don't necessarily get enough vitamin D from the sunlight. So you need to make sure that you've got enough vitamin D, which may involve taking a supplement, probably will. Vitamin E, you can use foods rich in vitamin E. Magnesium, we found this when we did our five studies in the early days, we found that magnesium was the most common deficiency in women. Now there's been studies done and 
the really inter big international studies have shown that billions of women in particular around the world have got nutritional deficiencies and they're not going to get better unless you correct them. Zinc is also important. As I said, it's important for boosting immunity. Calcium helps with brain chemistry, helps with the uptake of magnesium and helps you to stay healthy, keep healthy bones and essential fatty acids. As they say, they are essential for all aspects of our health, for our energy, for our brain function, for our mood, for our joint health, and so on. So you need to make sure that your diet is rich in all those things. And then bear in mind, you've also got what I call the food robbers. So in certain foods and drinks, unfortunately, some of the things that we like the most, things like tea that contain phytates and wheat and bran that do too, and red wine as well, those things lock onto nutrients and stop them from being properly absorbed. So things like calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc go in one end and out the other, and they're not what we call bioavailable. So it's really important maybe in the beginning to do a bit of a detox. If you are feeling stressed and anxious, you need to make sure you get your refuel. And in order to do that, you may need to take certain things out of your diet in the short term. It's not a life sentence. So a few top tips about shopping and cooking and eating. I think planning is the most important thing. So I would urge you to set aside some time each week to do planning, especially if you are based at home, to make sure that you've got a good shopping list and that you've got every single meal and your snacks covered. And maybe do a couple of shops a week if you can get the food, if not once a week. But make your list, plan it out, and most importantly, stick to it. And don't make the list when you're hungry. You don't want to be shopping on an empty stomach because then you'll make impact impulse choices and you don't want to be doing that you want to make sure you don't miss a meal and that you've got a good wholesome breakfast lunch and dinner if you are premenstrual still you may need a wholesome snack mid-morning and afternoon if you do that then you may need to make the portion sizes of your main meals a bit smaller so i tend to advise people to put all your food on the plate don't make the plate too big and then that way you eat your meal and you're finished. You don't have the bowls on the table with extras so that you keep doing the seafood diet. Because if you're anything like me and you keep seeing it, you'll think, oh, I don't want to waste that. I'll just eat another mouthful and so on. And then you find out you've eaten another dinner. Make sure, make sure your meal times are special. Think about when you're eating and chewing your food thoroughly that you're enjoying your food and it is nourishing you, it's nurturing you. It's the, it's the stuff that's keeping you alive and well. And just if you think about that, so don't particularly watch TV while you're eating. Make the meal a special time. If you've, if you've got the luxury of eating with someone, then you can have good conversation over dinner. But really take time to savor your food. It's so important. And then looking at what can you have for each meal, you may already be having a good diet, but if you're not and you're looking for options, then having a wholesome cereal in the morning with some milk or soya milk, some nuts, extra seeds and fruit is a good idea. Or if you can't really face breakfast in the morning, you can have a shake and then eat a bit later. Or if you feel that you want a cooked breakfast, you could have eggs and tomatoes and mushrooms and then make a shake for later on in the day if you need to have a snack and if you're premenstrual, um, you may need to have a snack. If you're perimenopausal or menopausal, you may need to get some naturally occurring estrogen into your system as well in the morning. Lunchtime, you ideally want to have a salad if you can, especially this time of year, it's easy. You can throw in some edamame beans, which are good protein, especially if you're getting into your forties and you need to top up on naturally occurring estrogen. You can have things like hummus and guacamole and little vegetable sticks to dip in and corn chips and rice chips. Or you can have something that's left over from yesterday, some soup, a jacket potato with a filling, any of those. But you want something wholesome and probably something quite easy if you're busy during the day. And then in the evening, you want to ideally have some protein with three servings of vegetables and make sure you've got a nice full plate of the foods that you like. And mix it up a bit so you don't get bored with the same foods. Maybe look for some recipes. Or if you're not really good at cooking, there are tons and tons of fast food options. I remember going to national magazines to do a series of talks for their staff because most of their staff were having breakfast, dinner, lunch and dinner at their desks because they were working such long hours. 
and most of them, when we did a survey, had either acne, PMS, migraine, fatigue, anxiety, or something that wasn't optimum. And so I, I stopped on my way there and I bought two bags of fast food, but it was healthy fast food. And I did a demonstration and I showed them how they can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at their desk with everything that had been pre-prepared, but it was all healthy. So you don't have to be a cook necessarily. If you like cooking, then there's tons of great recipes and different things that you can cook up to nurture yourself and your family, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can rely on fast options. So the seventh and final way to thrive in new normal is it's important to understand that, and I've come to realize this over the years, it's not what's thrown at us in life, but how we deal with it that counts. Just think about that, because so many things happen to us in our lives, and it can really throw us and just throw us off beam and make us feel less than we were before or make us feel incapable in some way. But if you work out how to deal with it, like I did when I did the Angelus Foundation, that helped me, believe it or not, although eventually it didn't help me, but it certainly um, in the long term, it helped me by helping others. And doing random acts of kindness is another thing that can help us because it releases endorphins. So that's something that you can put into practice every day as well, just doing something nice for someone else. And most of all, believing in yourself because knowing that you are all powerful and that you are really capable and that you can achieve probably most things that you set out to in your life if you've got the right mindset counts for an enormous amount. And you really do need to believe in yourself. And if you don't, there are all sorts of things you can read. There are books that you can read and courses that you can do that help you to still the negative voices so that you can focus on being really positive. And that is important. So we don't know what's happening in the future. We have no idea. We read these news reports that say that things are getting worse again. They're expecting another wave in the autumn. And they are also, this morning I read another report about some other virus that may be coming. It's just, it doesn't even bear thinking about. So we, I think we have, we can't, there are some things in our lives that we just can't control. What we have to focus on to feel good is the things that we can control. How do we live in an enriched way do we really want to go back to old normal or would we like to bring some of old normal with us and create some new normal? Is it a way that we can live our lives in a better way and fill ourselves up, focus more on love and what really matters in our lives? And that I feel is where I am. I certainly, I was traveling backwards and forwards from America to England every month and really wearing myself out. And now I'm doing a lot of those meetings virtually I'm not missing out on much. I'm spending much more quality time with my husband. I've got time to do my exercise instead of rushing to get on the tube. And I even got a new puppy. So that's you know thing, something I really wanted as part of my new normal. So you need to think about what is, what is it you want to put on your canvas for the future? How do you want to live your life? And you can get to do that if you've got the right tools and the right mindset. <clears throat> so we have lots of different ways to help. We have the download, the one I mentioned, and other downloads as well, which you can have access to. And we, I'm on social media, so I do go onto Instagram. I've got a Facebook group, and I also am very happy to have conversations on the phone, anybody who wants any help. We have lots of free things we have um, on our website. We've got newsletter you can sign up for. We do every week. Blog I do every week, and I've made probably at least 100 weekly wisdom films. So there's tons of films on YouTube. And as I said, as my Facebook group, which is making midlife switch. And we have virtual classes as well on lots of different subjects. So you're welcome to attend any of those. And there are self-help things that you can do if you want to, or you can just help yourself, or we have a 14 day self-help program. And we've also got a new program for stress and anxiety that you can take advantage of if you need to do that as well. That's just a five day course. And we do also help in the workplace. We've partnered with Virgin Healthcare to do some work. And we've been doing webinars for different companies. We did a, one for, <coughs> excuse me, for Cisco globally. And they said that both the men and the women reported it was the best health initiative they'd ever undertaken. 
And so that was really music to our ears. So we have um, lots of COVID support for companies to help them to thrive in new normal and understand how they can cope with stress and insomnia and even losing weight without dieting, as well as boosting immunity, overcoming brain fog and fatigue. So all of those things are available, as well as our self-help programs. And we also have um, one-to-one consultations if anyone wants to have some extra help, even if you just want a a conversation to be pointed in the right direction. I'm really happy to do that. So you can contact me and uh, the contact details are there on the screen. You can take a screenshot of that, or I'm sure you'll get details from We Are The City, and you'll get the link to the download after this as well. So you're very welcome to get in touch if you need help. And if you want some help for the workplace as well, or you'd like to talk about how we do it, uh, very happy to talk about that as well. So that is...